everybody. Welcome to another episode of Banking Matters. I'm your host, Lindsay Hughley, and joining me today is Frank Lazaro. Frank is a pioneering leader and visionary, merging over two decades of marketing, technology, strategy expertise with AI-driven content creation methods. His career highlights include impactful roles at Deloitte, AT&T, and First Data, and an MBA underlying his deep industry knowledge and commitment to tech innovation. Frank's innovative side is evident in his U.S. patent portfolio for business processes and product designs, marking him as a distinguished innovator and results-oriented executive. Currently, Frank is the SVP of marketing at at the Piedmont Bank. In addition to his professional achievements, Frank is a published author of AEC Marketer's Guide to Artificial Intelligence and Let Me Be Frank With You, reflecting his eagerness to share knowledge and his influence. His books exemplify his understanding and passion for blending creativity with advanced technology. Frank's unrivaled passion for technology, innovation, and growth-centric solutions make him an invaluable contributor, continually inspiring and guiding industry professionals with his insight and strategic foresight. Frank, we are so thankful that you're here to share with us today. How are you? I'm doing well, and yourself? I'm doing very good. Um, so on banking matters, we always like to start off with asking our guest, how did you get into banking? Uh, well, so interestingly enough, you know, my undergraduate degree was actually in political science. Um, so it was kind of like I left college and I tried to figure out what I wanted to do. And I landed a marketing role on for a technology company. And from there, I really got my roots kind of built into the technology piece of just liking technology and understanding technology. And then somewhere within there, you know, as, as, as some people have told me before, I reinvented myself and I'm like, I'm gonna get into the payment space. And so I started working for a local payments processor, you know, working on the card side and it just kind of evolved there. And so it's interesting. So half of my career has really kind of been spent with technology companies and understanding technologies. And then the other side has really been focused on the financial services space and more recently here at the Piedmont Bank. Yeah, what an awesome blend of the technology side to have that base knowledge and then coming into yeah. the financial institutions. Right. So um, we do want to hear about what your thoughts are on artificial intelligence and how it can help and benefit the financial in- industry systems. Yeah, it's interesting. So I've already spoken, I think, twice this year, no, three times this year to financial advisors, financial services company, particularly on the retirement side. So think of uh, state retirement plans, 401k advisors, investment uh, individuals. And But regardless of the industry, whether it's the retail banking side, whether it's the financial advisory side, but even switching industries to say uh, an architecture firm or something else, a very, very common Um, questions and concerns and impacts. Uh, When you think about where AI is today, it's really around the content generation aspect. So it's going to impact your sales and marketing. It's going to impact, you know, the emails that you can can send to your customers. Um, It can impact. And one of the big things that can impact is it can help you can create, you know, that financial wellness and financial education to educate your customers on why it's important to save, invest, and to do these things. Um, and it just allows smaller marketing teams to actually perform like a bigger marketing department. I look at here at the Piedmont Bank, you know, we're a 15, 16 branch um, institution. Uh, we only have two or three marketers. So how do I get the team to operate like we're six people? We have to use technology and AI is the vehicle for us to do that. That's awesome. So a lot of my background is from community banks that are just like what you described. So what would you say would be the first step that as a community bank marketing director that really wants to start utilizing AI? What would you suggest is like a first step into utilizing that that technology? Yeah, so... Interestingly enough, for me, it's it's you can work at the edges. And so think of, you know, your social media content and you think about the emails that you send to your customers. You know, how could you create something unique and, and that's going to resonate with them? So you could take your previously written emails and previously written social media content and have AI kind of rewrite it and refresh it. Um, say you're targeting college savers or you're targeting something along those lines, you could take a piece of content that's not designed for college savers. Maybe it's just for savings and have AI rewrite it for you with the college savings spin. So it just allows you to kind of get from that blank page or stale content 
to something that's a little bit more robust. So when you think about this from my perspective, you know, uh, we don't spend a lot of time on social media up until recently. But how do we how do we get more proficient at that? How do we post more than once a week and get into start really engaging with our customers? Well, we're taking the content and just repurposing it through AI to allow us to kind of be more active in what we do. So I think the initial place for most small marketing departments and community banks and whatnot should really kind of focus on your marketing efforts, low hanging fruit, low risk. You know, we have processes in place to where we actually send stuff through compliance. So we write it and then it goes through compliance. It does all the all the things that we need to do. And then, but it just allows us to get there faster. Um, and then we want to expand that. We want to then start thinking about, okay, on the commercial side, we think about lending and, and how do we start thinking about maybe getting it into um, helping the lenders with their proposals or their outreach or their email. So there's so many different long tail things that you can do with AI, but start with the marketing side. And I think that's going to be the most effective and most efficient way for you to integrate AI into what you do today. Yeah, I can definitely see how that would be a big help. So my next thought in hearing that is what steps would you take to convince um, people that may be very hesitant towards the utilization mm -hmm. of AI in banking and is, I mean, even just in marketing in general, but mm -hmm. what, yeah. what are some things that you have to share on that part? Yeah. So interestingly enough, you know, just like most industries go back to the architectural engineering space or you go back to the banking they tend to the, the people that run the banks and run those other industries and those those firms tend to be a little bit older and they're li least likely to kind of embrace the technology and and that's a struggle where you you have new technology coming out but then you have people that no we do things traditionally and they and they have a, a very very prescribed uh, way of thinking do use cases and and i love i love the concept of being able to kind of show hey here are like the six things that we're able to do with ai and you build the confidence with it and so test it you know write the write the email or develop your social media or do the things that you would normally do but then also do the same exercise in in parallel with ai and show the outputs hey you know this week we were able to generate three emails but with ai i was able to generate a whole month's worth of emails within the same time period. So I think it's just kind of showing the efficiencies of that. And I think once you do that, I think that it kind of takes away the mystery and the, and the scariness of it. Oh my God, it's scary. No, it's really not. <laughs> it's, it's just a tool. It's, it's a way for, you know, for marketers, I love con the concept of Canva. I don't need a graphic designer. I have a tool that allows me to kind of create email graphics and social media graphics without any, like, I don't have to learn Photoshop and Illustrator and all these other tools. Canva does, it's, it, so to me, it's just a tool. And so what you want to do is just kind of show how you would use it before you actually use it and then show people and really kind of get their buy-in. And you're going to realize that they're really going to embrace it because you could do so much more. You can do really nice things with it um, and, and really kind of be a more effective marker, marketer. For sure. And while I know efficiency across mm -hmm. the board is so good, especially for community bank um, mm -hmm. and where I'm at is very rural. It is hard to find people that specialize in this. And so I do see how this could be such a beneficial thing. Mm -hmm. The next side of me, yeah. the compliance officer side, I wonder, so have you been posed with much compliance pushback as far as what you've utilized it for? Or are you very intentional about kind of separating um and making sure that those things yeah. don't mix up. Well, yeah. So for the most part, from from our perspective, we just follow the process. So we we submit stuff to Compliance Alliance so that it gets reviewed. If it's really complex, we'll send it to the compliance officer and say, hey, before we submit it, what red flags or what do you see here? So we go through, no matter how it's generated or whether it's an individual, whether it's AI, it's going through our normal processes. Um, and we don't get a lot of pushback because once they see it and they look at it and they realize, well, this is really no different. The only difference is the volume that I'm able to create. So instead of sending one email through, I'm sending it, I'm giving them four emails through you. So it's just a volume issue and not necessarily any underlying concerns. And so we fact check everything, we review it. Then I think that's the important part with this. There is no magic button with AI. I don't click a button and then immediately be able to use it. I, there is that human refinement and that human review. So anything that you generate with AI, just like if you were generating something on my team was generating something, I'm gonna review it, proof it, ask questions about it, and then we're gonna refine it 
then go through compliance review and approval, and then go to go to market. So the, our processes really haven't changed. It really is kind of focused more on the how we're creating the content. Um, and then we also start, most of the stuff that we create really starts with some stuff that we've already created. So we're, we're really just repurposing stuff that exists so that we're, we're less likely to run afoul of any issues where, where people are going to run into issues with the content. Yeah. So I do have a question. So I personally have used chat, BB, ch chat, C GPT. GBT, maybe yes. one time, I think, like mm -hmm. I understand yeah. that it, especially someone my age, I should be utilizing it more. So when you say that you, and then I'm, this is just a question that I have. So yeah. you say that you come back and you ask questions just like you would on your team. Can you do that same thing mm -hmm. with something that you get from AI that they that is generated? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And I think the way I treat it is I treat it like it's a human being. So it, it is a conversational AI in the sense that you're, you're, you're talking to it and you want to talk to it like it's a human being. Um, and it kind of outputs it like a human being. And one of the, th one of the, the, when I teach AI content creation to people, we really, I do focus on this one example. And I love this one example. Think of it as an intern and, and, and use that as, as, as a framework. If you had a summer intern that came in and you came and you went to them and say, Hey, create me an email for, um, deposit accounts and then walked away. What kind of email do you think that you would get? Like it wouldn't be usable. They wouldn't know anything about it. It would probably take them forever to do that. But if you came back and said, Hey, here are all the emails that we've ever done around deposit accounts. Here's our brand guidelines. Here's our brand voice. Check out our competitors. Look at this, do all this other stuff. You're probably going to get something back. That's probably about 70% usable. That's exactly what AI is. AI is never going to produce hundred percent. But if that intern can actually produce something at 70%, then you're only spending about 30% of your time just editing, reviewing, and getting it the way you want, and then go through the rest of your process. So yeah, absolutely, you need to talk to it as, a, as if it was a person. Funny enough, I do thank it sometimes when I'm in there, thank you, and it responds back, you're welcome. But it's weird. I know that it's not a person and it doesn't have feelings, but it like I that's just the way I get into that mindset to where I talk about I talk to it as if it was a person. <laughs> so I do wonder, do you have a specific I know you mentioned Canva earlier. Do you have specific mm -hmm. um platforms that you utilize the most? Um do you want to mm -hmm. mention a few of those? Yeah. So obviously the big elephant in the room is ChatGPT. <laughs> Um, it is the gold standard in terms of content creation. Um, I have been testing Microsoft Copilot. It's not as robust, like m meaning that the answers that it gives is not as detailed as what I can get out of ChatGPT. The cool part is, is that they operate exactly the same way. So how you ask it questions, if you use one, you can ask the same question in, in the other, um, which is which is interesting. So yeah, Canva is another one. Canva is starting to put some some AI functionality into into their platform, which is which is good. Um, some of the other things that we do that I use uh, in particular, I, I do use a product called Applaud, which is P L A U D, and it's a note taker and it's built it's built on ChatGPT, so it helps me capture notes um, and then and then kind of translate. So I'm I'm a terrible note taker, so it's almost like a, a blessing for me to have that product. Um, and then I use a product called Motion, which is uh, my calendaring project management, task management. It just allows me to kind of manage my calendar um, from an AI perspective. So I could put tasks on there and it moves things around. Um, I can send out meeting links and people can, can get on my calendar. Um, and it allows me to kind of block up. So those are the ones that I'm primarily using right now. And I use both. I use almost all of them both on a desktop and on my phone. Um, so, you know, um, yeah, I, I pretty much have abandoned search. I don't do Google search anymore. I just use ChatGPT for everything. Yeah, so that is definitely what I'll be taking away from this. <laughs> as, as for me, just because I don't have my hands in the marketing process anymore. Yeah. Um, and so that would be so helpful. And also what's funny is I just read an article today. Um, I guess it's my phone's listening to me as well, but it popped up on my stuff talking about how um, the this college student takes all of their notes and their mm -hmm. information from their 
um, professor or anything that gets handed out, they'll take pictures and put it in and combine it. And there mm -hmm. was a platform that was taking it and basically making a podcast for them to listen to because they, yeah, they're more of when they hear it, they learn it better kind of situation. Mm -hmm. Have you seen or used anything as far as like training wise with or thoughts mm -hmm. on th using AI for that kind of things? Yeah. So one of the things that AI does a really good job at is, is, is helping you upscale in the sense that if you're not proficient in say digital marketing or SEO or SEM, you can use ChatGPT to really kind of help you ch like train yourself on that. So when you think about getting free education and learning about something, it's very easy to kind of ask the the GPT, like, help me understand this better. Like, how does this work? What is, you know, what is a click through rate versus, you know, open rate and why does it matter? And so you can, you know, so you can have a conversation with it so that again, it's not giving you generic training to where you're just sitting through it. And there's some concepts, you know, and some concepts you don't know, you can really get it focused really just on the things that you don't fully understand and ask it questions about it which then allows you to kind of really, you know, hone in your training around. So I think upskilling is, is a really important uh, um, asset to what AI can offer. And I, I do it for a lot of things, to be honest with you. And interestingly enough, you know, I have two sons in college and, and one son kind of struggles with stats and I've kind of convinced him say, hey, why don't you use ChatGPT to help you understand the, the concepts, like ask it questions. Hey, my professor said this, I didn't understand that. And he ended up passing the class this last semester, but it was almost kind of like a built-in tutor. Like you just have it open and he was studying and he didn't understand the concept. You could do that exactly same thing for work. When you when you come back and you sit there and say, okay, we're gonna run, we want, we want to do digital ads. How does this work? What do I need to do? Why is it important? Like what's the call? I use it for call to actions all the time. Hey, this is my product. Here's my customer profiles. What would be good call to actions? And it'll give me 10 or 12 of them and they're idea starters. I can go in and sit there and go, oh, I like that. Well, I don't like that one. I'm going to tweak it. So you think about it, it's ID, you can generate ideas off of it. You can learn off of it. So there's so many different aspects of it from that perspective, I think is that one of the things that I think most marketers really need to lean into. Yeah. And definitely like I'm honestly, from a personal standpoint, my oldest son is going into high school. And so what you just hey. said about your son and stats, like we will definitely be taking advantage of that. Um, yeah. So, so oddly enough, from a personal perspective, I was reading a book recently and maybe I wasn't paying attention when I got through a particular chapter, but I didn't understand the dynamic between these two characters. I went to ChatGPT and said, I'm reading this book. I, I think it was East of Eden. And I said, tell me the dynamic between this character and that character. And it gave me like, it's almost like the Cliff Notes version of that thing. I was like, oh, okay, good. So now I just have ChatGPT open when I'm reading a book, when, I, when I'm trying to understand the dynamics between two different characters. Yes, um, definitely. Hopefully maybe after our podcast comes out, more people will be using it just for random things like maybe. that. But such a cool way maybe. to yeah. utilize the technology that's available to us. Oh, yeah, um, absolutely. And I'm so thankful that you shared just ways, the way to compare um how to show the efficiency pro differences between mm. when you do and you don't utilize the technologies available to you. Um, I really hope that that helps a lot of people. So I do have one yeah. last question for you. So we always like to yeah. ask our guests, what is one final piece of advice that you'd like to leave us with today? Yeah. Um, you know, great question. And I, and I think when we think about AI, you know, and this is going to be kind of like a two part answer. The first part is, is that, it's going to be in everything, like any tool that we use. And you, you think about this for a second, Microsoft is, if you're on Windows 11, it's being integrated into the operating system. It's already built into the web browser on the Microsoft Edge. It's, it's available online. Um, if you get the Microsoft licenses, it's gonna be in Microsoft Word and Outlook and Teams. So if you are operating in that environment, it's gonna be hard to avoid AI. With that said, the second part of that is, you need to get training. You need to learn how to use it effectively because if you don't, you're not going to get the results that you want and it's going to take you longer to get the results that you want. I think training is, is the key part and there's there's a lot of free training online that you can get. You go to LinkedIn Learning, you can go online, you can pay for training, but just get training. And I say it for two part is, is that one, it's going to be everywhere. Two, you really need to learn how to use it effectively. And if you do those two things, you're setting yourself up for some really good success in terms of being able to create great marketing content, make engaging marketing content, um, and you can start small. 
start with social media, start with emails. You don't have to boil the ocean. And then as you get proficient in it, then you can start expanding it to other things. You're out of home, your radio spots, writing scripts. You can get very, very, very advanced with it. So again, it's going to be everywhere. Get some training, start small, and then and then grow from there. Awesome. Thank you so much, Frank. And for the rest of our listeners, that's Banking Matters. <laughs>